Welcome to Chop the Rock, Little Rock's latest cooking show. And we have our first chef guest with us today, Kathy Webb with Arkansas Hunger Relief Alliance. How are you? I'm great, Dana, and thank you so much for having me here today. It's very exciting to be part of this. We are so excited to have you on. We know that you are just a really well-known, skilled chef in a lot of different ways. And we just want to hear a lot about what y'all are doing at Hunger Relief Alliance and how you're helping people through Cooking Matters. It's such an important thing here in Little Rock for so many of our citizens. Well, one of the reasons I was drawn to the Hunger Relief Alliance was because of this program. Cooking Matters, is a, uh, it's an evidence-based program that teaches low-income families how to cook and shop on a budget. And the uh, recipes are all easy to fix, inexpensive, delicious, and pretty healthy. So that's really a win-win. And this is uh, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna cook two recipes. If you actually take the course, it's a six-week course. You have homework. Uh, we provide the food for you to take home and practice on during the week. And so you and I are gonna uh, just act like we're at one of the classes and we're gonna go through the way we would do it with our families. We teach kids uh, and their parents and we teach seniors. So any, anybody, any age is a great participant in this program. That's really important. You can actually make a difference in these people's lives yes. after they leave your program and they can continue to cook healthy and feed their kids better, which makes them do better in school. Yeah. It's a really important way. Yeah, a lot of people don't know that they can do that. And so it's really exciting to hear from people who participate in this program who, who say, I didn't know I could do this. I didn't learn how to do this at home. And uh, when they go to the grocery store, you know, they go now with tools to know what to buy, how to fix it. And it's really exciting to hear from people who say, we go to the grocery store together today, my daughter and I, and we no longer go through the drive through So right. that's pretty cool. Right, they can have a whole lot more fun with it. And yeah. they learn how to meal plan so that they can extend their food dollar for their household too, so yeah. that's also great. It shows that you can reduce your food insecurity by up to 50% without spending any more money by completing the Cooking Matters program. That's a very big deal. It's a big deal. That's it's cool, great. and it's fun. It is so fun. So we're gonna have fun. Let's have some fun. Okay, and what we're, we're gonna do two things, I said, and the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do Asian noodles with peanut butter sauce. Of course, Ooh. I'm kind of drawn to Asian food, having had an Asian restaurant right. for a long time and uh, we already cooked the noodles. Mm -hmm. We used whole wheat pasta. Uh, I got it on sale, it was very inexpensive. Mm -hmm. And with the, the recipes that we provide in this, we tell you exactly what you need, how much you need, what cooking utensils you need, and then if you want to substitute, we give you suggestions for things that you might substitute. So uh -huh. you and I are gonna start off by chopping the vegetables. Okay. And I wanna make it pretty and tasty. So we're gonna use a red pepper, a yellow pepper, and some broccoli. Okay. Everything is washed and I can help, uh, help chop. Uh, one of the first things that you wanna do when you chop is you wanna make sure that you cook the pieces about the same, cut the pieces about the same size. Right, so they'll cook at the same time, so at the same rate. So cook at the same time. Okay. And we also, when we cook vegetables, when we saute vegetables, we also wanna make sure that it's something uh, that's really dense you know, we, that's gonna take a little bit more time to cook, and so we would put that in the skillet first, and then things that have a high water content, we would put in towards the end. Otherwise, they're gonna, mushy. They're, they're mushy. mushy if you don't do that yep. right. And so those are just things that we're gonna think about. And I'm gonna uh, actually probably make the sauce well, once, I I get you, once I get you started. I can chop. You know, one of the things that is always important to remember about chopping is that you do want to, uh, have an even surface, mm -hmm. you know, so so like with peppers, we're gonna cut the peppers in half, and then that way you can put the pepper down I flat see. on the table. I'll get you started. You know, we just pull out the, the middle and we get rid of most of the seeds. Gotcha, you know what? And then we're gonna put this right over here. Okay. Don't want to get too much stuff, and I've cut uh, the ends off the broccoli. We're not get, we could use the stalk, right? Uh, but for the purposes of today, we're going to use mostly the block broccoli florets, right? Okay? But the stalk is just as nutritious it's and just healthy, as good. so don't throw that away. Don't you, throw that away. Yeah, you can cook that in a different dish, perhaps. You could cook that in a different dish, right? Or if we didn't want to use the peppers, we could just use broccoli 
um, and have all of the broccoli, use, use all the broccoli in this dish. Okay. So I'm just going to kind of get you started okay. on that. And I, you probably know, uh, tuck you know your not, fingers. to tuck your fingers as best you can. And this is a pretty good knife. And for purposes of this dish, we're going to cook the, we're going to cut the peppers about like this. Okay. So okay, if so you will, thin. we'll start that. I'm going to start the peanut sauce. Okay. Now, um, the peanut sauce is pretty simple. It's mm -hmm. just got peanut butter, uh, soy sauce, a little bit of apple cider vinegar, some warm water, and just a little bit of sugar. Okay. And I did choose to get a lower sodium natural peanut butter mm -hmm. that was on sale mm -hmm. and the low sodium sauce uh, the low sodium soy sauce was also on sale and so that's what I got so I'm just going to whip up this sauce while you're okay. doing that of course I've made a lot of peanut sauce in my time right at, uh, at Lily's at Lily's made a lot of that and one of the things that when you're uh, making a sauce with peanut butter. I'm gonna put the peanut butter into the measuring cup first, and then I'm gonna add the water and the soy sauce and all the other things in the measuring cup to try to make sure I get all the peanut butter and, and uh, get it mixed it'll into kinda the- It'll kind of wash the peanut it, butter out a little bit. It'll kind of wash the peanut butter I out. I see, okay. So if you prefer a different type of peanut butter, you could certainly use crunchy peanut oh, butter okay. if you wanted that. Or a natural uh, peanut butter um, that's the stir kind. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this is, uh, as I said, this is a natural peanut butter, low sodium, but you know it's not something that we have to do. Do you want me to cut both of these? I think that's probably enough. This is enough, just half. Okay. Mm -hmm. And again, uh, we could use another recipe for our meal tomorrow and use the rest of that. We could have some uh, quesadillas. Mm -hmm. We could have some burritos. Right. Um, anything like that that would that would also be a tasty, easy to fix dish. This cookbook has wonderful recipes, and we encourage people to get things that you can use in more than one recipe. So that goes back to the meal planning that you meal that planning teach. Mm -hmm. And and so how would I? What's the best way to store these? Let's say I don't have a bunch of airtight containers. Can I wrap this up in saran could, wrap or is foil better? No, I would wrap it up in a little bit of saran wrap. A little bit of saran in, wrap. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. great. Okay, so we're just using a little bit of the uh, low sodium soy sauce. I used warm water when I was uh, getting ready to make this and I uh, got the water a little bit ahead of time. And so one of the things that you would want to do is get the water right at the last and second, so, so to make hot. sure it is to make sure it is warm. Gotcha. Uh, but you can see now we're getting the peanut butter all mixed up with well, the it sauce. Smells good. I can smell it now that you're stirring it too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It does smell good. This is a good dish, and when you use things like the red bell peppers, uh, it it makes it really good. One of the things we do with our clients, uh, we have a mobile farmer's market oh. that goes to some of the uh, downtown high rises, and it also goes to the Hillary Clinton Children's Library. And we have recipe cards based on what we've got on the farmer's market that day. And so if we had zucchini, um, you know, if we had yellow squash, if we had eggplant, you know, whatever things we had on the farmer's market, those would be the kinds of things that you could toss in this dish. That is great and wonderful that you provide that resource for them as far as the recipe at the same time as bringing that healthy food right there. Because so many people who are in those high rises have mobility issues, mm -hmm. have, have problems getting around, and it might be hard for them to go and shop or even to get yeah. down to our farmer's market, which is on Saturdays from May until September through the end. Um, but you can get so many of those healthy things there. Like we also have uh, bell pepper when it's, mm -hmm. you know, in season. Kale is great. And you, you can just get it so abundantly at the farmer's market in the spring. And so that's great that you guys are able to bring that around to people as well. I love kale. Mm. I love kale. I, I need, I'm learning to like kale. Uh, it's like an acquired taste for me. So I have found a recipe where I make kale chips mm -hmm. 
and I get the dinosaur kale. And so mm -hmm. all the ladies at our farmer's market, um, the Vang families, and who grow all of these, their own beautiful spring vegetables, including several varieties of kale, they see me coming in farmer's market and they say, uh, kale? You want some kale today? And I'm kale? like, yes ma'am, I'll take a bag of kale, please. But I have, I have chopped it up very small and put it in a very flavorful dish. And that, that's... That kind of disguises the flavor because otherwise it's a little too strong for my personal preference. Sometimes I mix, uh, if I make the sauteed greens that we're going to have in a minute, uh, it calls for collard greens or kale or whatever you have. And one can take a little bit of, uh, you can take collard greens, you can take the kale, you can take spinach, you can take whatever you want to use add a little bit of garlic and I think that you'll find uh, when we when we do the kale that you might be surprised on how tasty it is. I, I am gonna be surprised I'm ready. You know I mean they laugh at me at work because I eat a lot of kale. Uh -huh. I have kale smoothie every day and sometimes uh, if I put too much kale on it I make this bad expression and they can right. tell that I put too much kale <laughs> in my smoothie. Gotcha. So what we're gonna do is we're heating our skillet just a little mm -hmm. bit We've got our sauce, we've got our noodles, we've got our vegetables all chopped. And you can see that this whole process has taken less than 10 minutes so far. Now, if we were doing this at home, I would have uh, turned on the burner. I would have put my noodles uh, after I brought my water to a boil. Right. That's when I would have put my noodles into the uh, stock pot. And then I would chop my vegetables and boom, saute them. The noodles are ready, the sauce is ready. We'll mix it all up and then as soon as this is sauteed, we'll be ready to uh, set it aside for a moment. We'll do the kale dish and then we'll be ready to sample. I think that's everything. an important thing too for people who are cooking at home. They, you know, are very busy. Everybody is just so busy anymore. Yeah. When you've got, if you've got a family, you've got kids, get them home from school, homework, they need a little bit of play time. You've got yeah. to have some family time you still got chores to do around your house and so it's hard to kind of time manage that very well yeah. and it's important that you can cook a healthy meal in your kitchen in under half an hour or so. Well and that's one thing about these recipes because uh, you know there's a restaurant term called mise en place mm -hmm. and that's getting all of your stuff together before you start the dish. I don't know if this has ever happened to you but it's happened to me where I'll be cooking something and I'll get to like the next to last ingredient yes. and I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't have the baking soda. Right. And then you have to stop and you have to run to the store. And so I encourage everybody to follow this recipe card, get the tools that you need like right. we did before we mm -hmm. started, get the vegetables Pre and the things like that. And we had everything ready, we're ready to go. So if you're a mom and you have a teenage daughter or a teenage son, uh, the recipes are written in a way that they're accessible to everybody. Gotcha. And so it's a great thing to learn how to cook together. And that's one of the things that we hear a lot from moms, that they're enjoying that time in the kitchen with their kid. Again, instead of going through the drive-through, they're enjoying the time with each other. And the kids enjoy the it kitchen. too. And the kids love it. They do, so, that's great. You know, I love having the kids, uh, you know, make, make their moms out to be wrong when the kids uh, eat, the, eat all the vegetables, you know, clean right. their plates. That's pretty cool. It is actually very mm -hmm. cool when the kids clean their yeah. plates. And what we're doing is I'm gonna heat the skillet. I've been heating the skillet up just a little bit. So you want to heat the skillet before you put the oil in. Uh-huh. And we heat it just a little bit, and then I'm going to put the oil in. I'm going to turn it down just a little. Okay, and so that's about now, on a medium. It's about on medium. Okay. And with saute, you have to cook on medium to medium high, depending on if you have an electric stove, because you don't want things to sit. Uh, I use canola oil, and you mm -hmm. want to use a, uh, you don't have to use a whole lot of oil. Okay. Uh, but you don't want something to get soggy by right. sitting in the oil. So the oil's hot, the skillet's hot, we're ready to go. And I'm going to ask you to bring the cutting board over here. This is and what I gonna, love about these cutting boards. I love these kind of cutting boards. Because you can fold them up. And we're gonna take, and, and one, another thing I like about it, this cutting board is, it is uh, it's color coded. I can kind of grab up some of this. I'm gonna take, ah! Okay. So that, that um, don't be scared 
if that happens, it's a natural thing, right? As, oh, we're, we're not worried about it. <laughs> gotcha. And it's important, you're using a non-stick skillet, and well, so that makes sauteing a whole lot easier. You don't want to do that in a iron skillet unless it's very, very seasoned or in a stainless steel, right? Well, and normally I use the skillet uh, here. Mm -hmm. I, I typically don't use a non-stick okay. skillet because a non-stick skillet is not as good for a high heat. Oh, okay. Uh, but we know with a lot of the families that we work with, they might only have one skillet. Right. You know, so if they're going to uh, saute some meat, if they're going to say use chicken for this and they want to chop the chicken up into small pieces you would cook your chicken first right and then you would have to really clean that skillet uh, you know use a different cutting board or make sure right. your cutting board is washed thoroughly right so because don't spread any so we don't spread any content kind of gotcha. contamination okay yeah so those kinds of things are very important um, and some of the things that you and I might take for granted, a lot of the folks we work with, they don't have those same kitchen tools. Right. So you won't see any recipes in this book that call for some of the, uh, some of the, some of the tools that you might only use for one thing and never use again. You use it in one recipe and never use it again. These are uh, basic recipes, your basic colander, paring knife, saucepan, stock pot, knife. And we have some very wonderful uh, folks who support Cooking Matters. And a lot of times they will actually donate knives and uh, saucepans and skillets and things like that so we can give the graduate right. their own tools to take home and use once they've finished uh, finish the class. That is fantastic that you send these people home with both the skills mm -hmm. and the equipment if they need it yeah. to be able to do this at home. Mm -hmm. So if somebody was looking, let's say I'm moving um, and I'm going to get some new kitchen stuff, um, do, do you accept not brand new items too? Gently How somebody, used. Okay, we're gently happy to have used. Great. Measuring, measuring spoons, measuring cups, okay. anything like that, we're, we're happy to have. A lot of churches will, uh, actually we've had churches that have done showers for us. Oh, great. And, and given things like that. So it's really Good idea. cool. Very you know, fun. It's really cool. It's more fun to cook, um, you know, when you've got some of the tools that you that you need. Absolutely. It can be frustrating if every time you're trying to do something, it's kind of like the odds are against you when it comes to uh, the equipment that you would need. So that's yeah. fantastic. And one of the easiest ways to uh, have an accident in the kitchen is to have really dull knives. Oh, yes. And then to cut yourself because cutting those peppers would not have been fun right. had you not had a good knife. Right, right. You know, and some of us are real picky about our knives. Uh, that is not an expensive knife, but that was the knife I, knife I used at the restaurant, and I brought it with me uh, gotcha. this morning. So I, Right. I'm not that particular about a knife, but I don't cook that regularly. But you can get, there's, there are um, knife sharpening things you can get it, uh, to have at home. They're not very expensive. Right. I'm sure that you guys teach people how to take care of their knives and the right way to sharpen them so yes. they can be used safely. Yes, and you don't have to have those $75 electric knife sharpeners. No. You, know, you can use a steel, and it's, uh, it's just the, it's the way you take care of the things that you have. Um, you know, if you don't have a, a grater, you can use a knife to grate something. You know, if you, there are a lot of things that you can substitute for some of the fancy tools that we right. might think that we need. Right, that, like that, a garlic mincer. We talked about this earlier. Yes. You can still mince garlic without a garlic mincer. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's kind of a little bit more fun to hit it with the knife and yeah. <laughs> chop it up. Yeah. yeah. Now, of course, uh, I did burn some of the broccoli, which is okay. That's the way I it think that's happens all right. sometimes. Yeah. But what we're going to do is I'm going to take the, uh, the vegetables. Okay. And we're going to pour uh, the sauce. I'm going to get you to stir the sauce gotcha. uh, one last time. Stir the sauce just a little bit. And we're going to stir, uh, we're going to pour the sauce kind of to taste over the, uh, over, the noodles. over the noodles. And I'm going to add the vegetables. OK. 
Okay. And then we will have, uh, we will put that aside for just a minute and we'll do the, uh, the kale. So should I put all of this on here? Yeah, go ahead and put it. Okay. Because right. we have more noodles that if we need to add. Right. Okay. That we could. You mean if, mm -hmm. And we can also add more uh, veggies. Gotcha. Uh, so if, so if you, can, you still have a little bit mm -hmm. to work with here if it's not exactly to your liking. Yes. And um, if you think it does need more vegetables or if you're just trying to hide more vegetables in your kids' food and you want to go heavier on the vegetables and lighter that's on the noodles. A, sometimes that's a good, uh, that's a good trick. Right, you just got to do what you've got to do to make sure that they're getting everything they need out of their food. A lot of the time when we have fixed this, uh, if the kids don't see the package, then oftentimes, uh, you know, they see the noodles when they're finished. Uh -huh. And when we, as we put the sauce on them, and they don't necessarily know that they're whole wheat right. noodles. You know, that, that's kind of an interesting thing about food. Uh, you can have it in your mind that I'm not going to like that. Right. And so before you try it, you've already decided, I'm not going to like that. So you have this preset opinion of it, mm -hmm. and it's kind of hard to change that once you're in that situation. Yes. But um, something I found, too, is um, you know, I know people who, who say, oh, I don't like onions. It's that they don't like necessarily the texture of onions, not the flavor. So if I have, a, you know, friends are getting together for dinner and someone's just not a big fan of onions, but the recipe calls for it, I might chop them up really small so that they don't notice it so much. But I hope your friends are not It's not an allergy. Oh, yeah, yeah. This, and now they're going to know your trick. Well, the, I would not tell them which dishes I do that okay, in then, good, right? Good, good. <laughs> yes. I hope they don't do watch. Don't tell them. Yeah, we want them to watch. We but, want them to but watch. But we won't tell them what... Uh, Right, what? I'll never give up the secret of which recipes have onions or not mm -hmm. to those friends, so. Mm -hmm. That is beautiful. Okay, I think we've gotten. Now, what we would, would want to do if there were three or four of us uh, who were gonna be eating, we would cook some more vegetables. I didn't bring a very large skillet. Uh, when you saute, one of the, uh, two of the mistakes that people make when they saute, uh, they use too much liquid Right. Uh, they use a cold skillet and people and the vegetables get soggy. So that's one of the mistakes. And the second thing that people do is you're in a hurry and you want to eat. So you cram everything you can into that one pan and then it doesn't cook evenly. Right. And it takes longer because it doesn't cook well. And then and it so, steams too. The yeah. stuff on the bottom steams mm -hmm. to the stuff on the top and yeah. so it can get soggy that way too, I'm it sure. It can. Right, so okay. it's easier if you saute in small batches oh. and then add it because this is a dish that can be served at room temperature. Uh, so we're going to take just a couple of minutes to make the, uh, the, the kale dish. Maybe not a couple of minutes, maybe about 10 minutes. Okay. And then uh, this will be warm. This is good at war uh, warm. It's good at room temperature. That's and great. actually, uh, I love cold peanut noodles. That oh. used to be one of the most popular things we had at the restaurant. Cold. A cold peanut noodle dish. Okay. Um, so you don't even, if you had leftovers, you don't even have to reheat it. You can just eat it straight out of the fridge. You or could. room temperature if you like it that way. Sure. Just bring it out, put it at room temperature for just a few minutes. Put it in the microwave if you wanted, just to take the chill off mm -hmm. of it. Uh, you have to be really careful because the noodles will get mushy. Yeah, yeah, and that's not good in the microwave. the worst thing you have is mushy noodles. Right, right. Well, I hate mushy. I'm real picky about my noodles. But uh, we've got a uh, uh, healthy, mm -hmm. pretty right. dish. And I'll tell you, we have a lot of clients who, uh, as I mentioned, were diabetic and have high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. And with a lot of these recipes, uh, I said we're teaching folks how to season things and make them taste good without using a lot of salt. And so I've actually had uh, women at the sixth class, which is the graduation class, who will show me that they have a, a belt uh, holding up their pants, or even I had a, a woman who showed me uh, some string that she had hold, holding up her pants. And just by changing, changing the way she seasoned food right. and by exercising, drinking more water, mm -hmm. fewer sodas, 
she had lost a significant amount of weight over In the course weeks. of the class. And okay. she was very proud of herself and she said, I just, I didn't know how to do this before this class started. So right. I'm really excited. She said, I'm gonna be healthier. And she pointed to her little five-year-old girl who was on her way to becoming mm -hmm. obese and diabetic. She said, I'm gonna do this for myself and I'm doing it for her. That's so there's nothing more gratifying than, than something like that. And to see someone who's having success and proud yeah. of themselves and wanting to teach that to their kid, yeah. um, you know, it's just to see them empowered through that, through a six week program to really change their lives. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's gotta keep you guys going at Hunger Relief Alliance and really all of does. your efforts and your hard work. It's very exciting. Okay, we're gonna tidy up just okay. real fast and then we're gonna switch uh, switch recipe. Got it, I'm ready, it smells good. I'm ready to okay. finish up and try some of this. Okay. Named one of five secret foodie cities by Forbes Travel Guide, Little Rock has a thriving artisanal food scene, great restaurants, and a growing number of craft breweries. Request a vacation planning kit at littlerock.com and see why we say dining is better with a southern accent. Sauteed greens. Sauteed greens. We're back with sauteed greens, which is the next part of this meal prep that we're doing with Kathy Webb of uh, Cooking Matters at the Arkansas Hunger Relief Alliance. Thank you for having me here today. We're so, I've learned so much already, and I'm sure that our viewers at home have as well. So let's go on to the next portion of this. Okay, and I don't know if you're like I was growing up, but we had greens all the time. Yes, we had collard greens, we had turnip greens, we had mustard greens. We had a lot of spinach and we didn't have very much kale. I mean, that wasn't as popular back when I was growing up. But we always had our greens with probably equal part greens and equal part salt pork or oh, yes. bacon or something like that. And cornbread on the side. And cornbread on the side. <laughs> so what we're going to do today is uh, a quicker version of greens mm -hmm. and also something that is a vegetarian. Oh, right. And it's quick, it's easy. And one of the things about this sauteed green recipe is you can choose if you want to use collard greens, if you want to use kale, if you want to use mustard, turnip, if you want to use some combination yeah, you of can all mix of those greens. Uh, my mom always mixed uh, turnip, mustard, and collard greens. That's the way too. we always had it. We had a mix too. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, and then it would sit on the pot, uh, stove for hours and hours and hours. And a pressure cooker. And sometimes in a pressure cooker. <laughs> right. So we're going to do this and make it uh, quick, and it, we'll, we'll have it along with our uh, peanut noodles. Mm. Okay, and good. We've got the green cutting board. We do. Let's talk about these okay. cutting boards because we were using these earlier, and you started to tell us why they come in the colors that they do. And, and you know, it's funny because uh, in the restaurant business, uh, we've used different color cutting boards for a long time. And lately I've seen these cutting board at, cutting boards at uh, some of your large box stores that right. are more affordable for right. folks. But it's real important that you don't cross contaminate. Like if we were gonna put chicken in the dish we prepared mm -hmm. already, uh, we would have cut the chicken on, on, the, this yellow. Cu on the yellow cutting board. Right. And if we were gonna use a beef uh, or other kind of meat, we would have used the red cutting board. And then for the vegetables, we're gonna use the green cutting board. I like these because they don't hold uh, germs as well as much as some of your hard cutting boards do. Right, or a butcher block. And also when you're ready to chop the uh, vegetables or meat up, you can just fold it up and then you can put it right into the skillet so it's quite easy. Right, and it's also good for you know cleaning up the waste. And yeah. you're right, you just put it right in the skillet. These are, I got these in a package of three for just a few bucks. Good. Um, they don't take up a whole lot of space in your kitchen. Yeah. And you can get enough of them for less than you can get one standard cutting board, really, for yeah. the most part so that you don't have to wash in between and risk that cross-contamination if maybe you were in a hurry and didn't do quite as good of a job. Yeah. Great, okay. Um, so we have spent quite a bit of time washing the greens and we've chosen to use kale today, uh, something that you can get at the farmer's market 
kale is usually pretty inexpensive at the grocery store. And as we know, we talked about it earlier, kale is something that's healthy for Absolutely. us. Absolutely, much better than, uh, so, than lettuce, say, yes. or something that's mostly So one water. of the first things we did was we uh, broke off the hard pieces on the end of the kale. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to take several pieces at a time. So We've like stacked it up so it's flat. And now we're going to roll it up, roll it up a little bit tightly. I think I need to roll it this way. Mm -hmm. Oops. And you have been an outstanding uh, kitchen assistant. Thank so you. Thank you very thank much you. for. Uh, I've learned you're a lot. doing a lot of the hard stuff too because you're doing the chopping. Okay, so then and a left-handed. And I'm a left. Uh, no. I'm a lefty so, too, so that makes it mm -hmm. um, all the more difficult. Okay, and one of the things that I'm noticing with your chopping is that you're using good technique because some people work really, really hard at chopping, and you don't have to do that. You should let the knife work for you. Right. And I noticed when you first did it, you put the knife down and then you slid it back, and so the knife was working for you instead of you working harder. And right. That, uh, so this is know, more like slicing than yeah. chopping. You're not, uh, yeah. you know, okay, gotcha. And if, if you don't like to cut, and if you don't have a decent knife, then cooking is not fun. Right. And so uh, using a good knife, it doesn't have to be expensive, but it just needs to be a good knife and then having those basic knife skills. I'm going to move this over okay. uh, to this cutting board so we can do a few more of these greens. Uh, the only thing we put in this dish besides the green, greens, we use some minced garlic mm -hmm. and then just a tiny bit of salt and pepper to taste. Okay. I'm not one who uses a lot of salt. Um, so we'll just put a, a tiny, tiny bit of salt um, and a little bit of pepper right. on the dish. Yeah. So like, let's say I had a, a our, our helper today was a kid and you could give the kid this, not really a knife, but you can, if you had some scissors, maybe some kitchen scissors, you could, you a could smaller use kitchen kid scissors. could help you prepare mm -hmm. some of these vegetables. Yes. And especially the greens that yes. need to be sliced like this. You know, okay, great. we have, uh, in Cooking Matters, we do classes where we have the adult and the kid in the same class. Oh, okay. We do classes that are sometimes just teenagers. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously, you don't want small children using the knives. But when we have enough volunteers, if we have kids who are in the upper elementary grades, you know, we're standing right there with them and we're teaching them the proper knife skills. Right. Some of the recipes in the Cooking Matters book are things that kids could come home from school and fix a healthy snack. So let's do uh, about three more leaves okay, of the kale, spot on it. Okay. and then we're going to uh, cook the kale, cook the garlic, and then we're going to get to eat everything that we have I'm ready. ready today. We've been smelling this for yeah. a while now, I know, so I'm ready. You hungry. <laughs> it is, it is. You know, one of the fun parts of Cooking Matters is at the end of each class when we have uh, done all the, uh, we've done the nutrition lesson, mm -hmm. uh, we've chopped and we've baked and we've sauteed, then we do all sit down together and we eat family style. We have two rules while we're sitting down to eat. Okay. And one is you don't say, you, here's a statement, don't yuck my yum. Ah, don't yuck my yum. I kind of like that. And so I tell my great nieces and nephews that, don't yuck my yum, because kids have a tendency to listen to their friends. Oh, right. I might think this is fabulous, but if you're my best friend and I really look up to you and you go, yuck, then I might go, yuck. Because I just want to be. As well. I want to be part of the group. Right, right. So don't yuck my yum. That's a great advice. Okay. And no cell phones. No cell table. phones. That's right. Total distraction. We're all yeah. guilty of that too. Mm -hmm. So it is best, you know, if nice if you have like a basket or to, something and just pass so it around and give it to them when they leave. Mm -hmm. That's and it's really, it's fun to see the kids and the adults and the volunteers sitting there enjoying a meal, talking to each other asking them what, what's their favorite dish. We usually fix two or three dishes mm -hmm. and what they like doing best. And then sometimes moms will just be in shock when uh, I remember one boy who was about in sixth grade, he jumped up and he started clearing the plates from the table. Uh, and his mother said, I've never seen him do that before. 
Ah, okay. You know, so it's it's pretty it's pretty cool. That is cool. You know, it's I'm a lot of fun. Definitely have to come out there. Yeah. And uh, participate. You have done in that. a great job on the uh, on the kale. And if you want to eat kale, but you're thinking, oh, you know, kale smoothie, that's a little bit too much. Yeah. Uh, steamed kale, uh, not so much. Not my favorite. This is a good way to take that first step into the overall kale experience. I'm very excited to try it because I personally am not a just kale fan. I really wanted to like kale, <laughs> um, but it just... I grew up on the other greens. I grew up on those cooked exactly how you described it, with salt pork or bacon. I mean, bacon grease was all anybody ever cooked with that in Crisco when I yes. was growing up. Very, very Southern um, style cooking that, that we always did. And so it was collard greens or mustard greens or that kind of thing. I, I do like kale chips, which are mm -hmm. super easy to do. And you kind of feel like you're indulging a little bit because you can make them like a potato chip flavor. Um, but they're still kale, but I'm hoping that I, I have a new way to love kale today when we're finished with this. Well, one of our uh, assistants brought uh, kale chips one time to the class uh -huh. and didn't tell the kids uh, what they were at the beginning of the class, what, what they were, and they adored the kale chips. Oh, and what happened? Did they tell them? Did they let the cat out of the bag on the trick afterwards? Yes, we, we let the cat out of the bag. And were they just so amazed and still very excited and said I liked it anyway yeah. now that I know that's yeah. great they really did and sometimes you do have to like you said people get a preconceived notion that um, they don't like something or maybe they see someone else who doesn't like something and you, you it almost seems unfair but it's it's for a good cause when you trick them into it so see how easy that is to just pick up all of that kale that we've chopped and prepared there and really easy uh, to get it over to your skillet without mm -hmm. spilling much of it. You don't have to get another um, pan or dish dirty to be able to do that, which is important. If you don't have a dishwasher, you, you don't want to just do a whole bunch of hand washing of dishes when you're finished with your meal. You know, we talked earlier about making sure you have the right size skillet for what you're going to uh, cook. and with the, the kale, uh, what we would probably do is make more than one batch. batch. Okay. And, and when you're sauteing, you're cooking at a, a fairly high heat. Actually, saute is from the French. The verb is sauter, and it means to jump. Ah, so it jumps so in the skillet. So it's jumping in the skillet. Gotcha. And that's kind of one of the fun things with, with saute. So I did not wash my tongs between dishes, so I'm not using my tongs, which is the way I'm most comfortable to uh, move things around in my skillet. Uh, and that is just beautiful. When see, you start to saute that, it turns this just rich, vibrant, vibrant green. Vibrant green. Now, if you would hand me some uh, garlic. Okay. I'm gonna add some garlic to this. We're just gonna I think I'm going to add uh, probably about a third of that garlic because, again, we're not cooking all of the kale just the first yet. time. Gotcha. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to just heat this for another minute or two okay. and let the garlic cook and really get in the flavor of this. Sometimes at the restaurant, I used to tell employees mm -hmm. that the knobs on the stove were not decorative. <laughs> so don't turn it on high and feel like you have to leave it on high yes. the entire time yes. you're cooking. The knobs are for to be used. Right. Okay. Okay. So what we're going to do, uh, we saute the greens a little bit, medium high heat. Right. And we added the garlic, and once we add the garlic, we turn it down. But the important thing is when you're sauteing, you do keep the food moving in the skillet. So it doesn't stick. So it doesn't stick. And if we were at a little bit different angle, it would be easier for me to pick it up and to be shaking, around. You know, shaking it around. And so uh, if you have tongs, if you have a spoon that stands up to high heat, whatever kind of utensil you want, uh, but just make sure you keep it moving around. What we're trying to do now is we're heating the garlic. And as soon as the garlic, it. it smells good, doesn't it? Smells it smells great. You can smell the smell coming out. Yep. And the kale is just beautiful. So we, we were talking also um, 
I, I knew that you could saute kale, but I grew up on very southern style food, as we've discussed, and I thought that it took all day long to cook greens. But I turns know. out this recipe called for turnip greens or mustard greens, you said? Or it just calls for mustard greens. Mustard greens. Or collard greens. Collard greens. There's so many kinds. But we, you substituted kale for a number of reasons. It's such a rich nutritional thing. You, you can get those and and it's a little cleaner of a vegetable to start yeah. with when you're doing your prep. You do want to make sure that it's good and clean. Um, so yeah, you can you can saute. You don't have to spend all day in the kitchen to have some good healthy greens. That's right. That's my and favorite we, way. <laughs> we had a uh, we had some uh, collard greens in a garden that we were doing for the community for some for some pantries. Mm -hmm. And one day we had just a few left over, and uh, I cooked them like this. And so instead of washing the greens over and over again, which you still had to do, right. and then putting them in a saucepan like this and waiting for four hours or whatever, right. uh, took about 10 minutes once I was ready to, uh, you know, once I had them clean, it was ready to go. So we are ready to turn this off. Okay. Turn this off. And we'll put that, and then I'm gonna oh, add the, the kale that we, the first batch that we made. Mm -hmm. Now, if I were uh, doing this at home, I would probably go ahead and put just a tiny bit of pepper and then let you put your own salt. Mm -hmm. I'm, I don't use a whole lot of salt. Um, and I just brought this kind of pepper today instead of uh, bringing a grinder uh, a, a grinder i'm not going to put much i'm just going to put okay just a touch just a touch and i'm going to like i said i'm going to let you put your own salt i brought perfect just a little bit of salt but we've got uh, a meal that was inexpensive it was easy to fix yes it's something that was fun to fix together that's well, right uh it's healthy it is healthy and it's tasty Let's taste it. So let's go. I'm ready. So, so while we're doing this, um, you, you told me a little bit of a story um, about some of the other outreach efforts that you guys have had through Cooking Matters, um, where you, you are able to um, modify the program from what you do at the regular Cooking Matters. Could you tell me just a little bit about yeah, that? Yeah, it's pretty cool. This, I mean, you can tell that this is an amazing program because it helps people change their own lives. Yeah. And uh, one of the classes we did uh, was with uh, Special Olympics and some young adults who do live on their own and they can use microwaves, but they can't use a stove. Because of the fire hazard. Because the fire hazard, risk. just like, see, I, I intentionally set the broccoli on fire to show you that it can be a hazardous thing to do. And you should not, really. not freak out when you do that, That's which right. is my go-to. That's right. <laughs> um, so we uh, modified the recipes so we could prepare everything that we taught in a microwave. And that really gives people such a sense of empowerment and independence, and they're making their own choices in doing that. And we had somebody from that class get a job in a restaurant. You know, and how meaningful is that to know that you've made a little bit difference in that person's life? Right, and they used the skills that yes. they learned through this class mm -hmm. to help build a resume to yeah. say, hey, I can walk in with some experience. Mm -hmm. Um, and that just, the more independence and the more empowerment they have, the more they're motivated, anybody, yeah. to go out and do more of that kind of thing yeah. for themselves. And so we, that's we, did, we did a class at Jericho Way, which is, you know, the city's homeless uh, resource center. That's right, that's the day right. Center. And we did a six week class and we chose recipes from Cooking Matters of things that didn't require an oven or a microwave and ingredients that didn't require refrigeration. Or special tools, or like special a can tools. opener. Right, you can get cans that have pop tops. Right. And like we have a wonderful uh, tuna recipe. So instead of getting canned tuna, we had uh, tuna that came in a pouch. And the recipe called for a little bit of mayonnaise and you can get those single serve mayonnaise packets right. instead of something, a jar of mayonnaise that you have to refrigerate. Right. Uh, we have this class in Spanish. Uh, so we uh, want to uh, take the class to folks who want to take the class and meet them where they are, empower them, give them tools and skills, better health, 
uh, like you said, some people can get a job through taking Cooking Matters. So it's just a, it's a very rewarding program, and we love to have folks who are good home cooks, uh, volunteer people who took nutrition in college mm -hmm. to volunteer for the nutrition piece. We love our volunteers. So, okay, so I want to try the kale first okay. because walking into this, I, I mentioned that I like kale chips, but I'm really just not a fan of kale otherwise. Mm -hmm. And remember, there's no salt. So if you want any salt, mm -mm. it's really good. That's, a, that's very, very good. It doesn't taste like kale. Kale can be pretty overpowering. It can be pretty overpowering. Mm -hmm. Um, but that is not too strong whatsoever. It's got just enough of the garlic flavor to it, kind of mellows it out. You put just a touch of pepper on there a while ago. Mm -hmm. I'll have to make that at home. Good. I'm excited. Let's try this one. Okay. I'll let you go. Now, you said that this is one of those dishes that we can serve hot or at room temperature or sometimes just, you know, cold out of the fridge and then mm -hmm. set at room temperature. So this has been sitting here. And we could have added chicken. So you could put you could put chicken in here or other vegetables if you like. Maybe if you were not a fan of the bell peppers, you could um, just do a little bit more broccoli. You could do more broccoli. Uh, I like to put an onion in it. Mm. Uh, a red onion is something that I like to put in dishes with peanuts. Uh, that's got a great flavor to it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't taste like you're eating peanut butter. Um, but it just seasons it just enough. That's really good. And it sat here while we prepared the other dish. So it is mm -hmm. at room temperature, and it's still a great tasting dish. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. And you know, this is actually it's similar to a dish that we used to fix at Lily's, but that dish had um, additional ingredients in it, like coconut milk, mm -hmm. but it had red bell peppers, um, it had uh, scallions. And it also had red onion in it, and it had chicken. It was one of the most popular dishes. So this is a different peanut sauce, inexpensive. Took a minute and a half to make the peanut sauce that we did. And again, affordable, easy to fix, tasty, healthy. That's so. right. That's the goal. And one more thing we want to remember, you can always add, but you can't take away. That's right. You know, so if we had made the peanut sauce and tasted it, and we thought, you know, I like mine a little bit more peanutty, we could have added a little bit. Yes. Uh, or you could add a little bit of salt to the kale. But if we salted it with a heavy hand, it's over. Right. So you when can't I'm unsalt it. When I make cooking errors or when I used to in the restaurant, I would usually try to make it on a small batch of food, not uh, you know, soup for fifty people. Right. Uh, before we go, I want to thank you so much again for coming today. This has been a great experience. I hope everybody at home is enjoying watching Chop the Rock and learning some things, but if someone is just now learning about Cooking Matters, tell us, can, can anyone, can, can you buy a cookbook if you wanted to support the program, or are there other ways that people at home can get involved in Cooking Matters? Um, we've got uh, our website, which is arhungeralliance.org. We've got a Facebook page. We hope you like us on Facebook. And we love to have volunteers who help teach the classes, who help shop for the classes or who may want to donate skillets and things like that. So uh, you can download a Cooking Matters app. Oh, great. And you can get most of the recipes that are in the cookbook and even additional recipes, nutrition tips and that kind of stuff uh, off the Cooking Matters app. Go to the app store and look for Cooking Matters. I'll have to do that. What so a great, it's a great idea. App. What a great way to make it so much more accessible to everybody. Yeah. Well, thank you again so much. Uh, we've got Kathy Webb here with us of Arkansas Hunger Relief and Cooking Matters. We hope you've enjoyed today's show. And please tune in to our next episode of Chop the Rock. I'm Diana Long with the Little Rock Convention and Visitors Bureau. And we are filming here in the River Markets, Bill and Margaret Clark Room Kitchen. <laughs>